Okay, seed. Verse 16, you see the term seed. Uh, he did not say, and to seeds, as referring to many, but rather one, and to your seed. Paul's point here is that seed in Old Testament passages, as in Genesis 3.15 and 22.18, the word seed refers to the greatest of Abraham's descendants, that is Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're not going to cross-reference those verses today, but take it to heart. If you're taking notes, you have the verses. Uh, Genesis 3.15 and 22.18 refer to seed as the greatest of the descendants, Jesus Christ. Verse 17. Verse 17 reads, moving on here, what I am saying is this. The law, which came 430 years later, does not invalidate a covenant previously ratified by God so as to nullify the promise. So very simply, the law came, the law that is apparently ruining the world because they're following it to the death of their selves and others. That law came 430 years after the promise. The promise was what God ratified for us, the blessing of the covenant. The blessing is in Jesus Christ. 430 years later, listen to this. From Israel's sojourn in Egypt to the giving of the law at Sinai, that was the 430 years. The law actually came 645 years after the initial promise to Abraham. This promise came to Abraham initially in 2090 B.C., we're looking at a couple of numbers that'll fascinate you, okay? We're in 2021, go back 2,000 years, and then go back 2,000 more, and a little change, and you have God telling Abraham, it's going to be through your seed, Jesus Christ. Everyone in the world is going to be blessed through him. Those that are blessed through Jesus spend eternity where? Thank you very much, in heaven. And those that are not blessed to understand Jesus Christ and are stuck following the law will spend eternity, according to the Bible, in a place called hell. Thank you very much. Biblical facts. Okay? The world is in a very bad place. We're in a very good place. 430 years. The promise was reported to Isaac also. And Isaac was reported, was spoken to by God in Genesis 26, 24. And later, the promise was spoken to Jacob in 1928 B.C. So we started in 2090 B.C. We're going backwards. Now it's 1928 because we're heading for one, right? We're heading for the birth of Christ. So in 1928 B.C., this is found in Genesis 28.15. In Genesis 28.15 and 1928 B.C., God spoke the promise again to Jacob. These are Abraham's sons. And so lastly here, the last known reaffirmation of the Abrahamic covenant, the promise God made, the last known reference comes in Genesis 46 2 through 4. This happened in 1875 B.C. Just before Jacob went to Egypt. 430 years before the Mosaic Law was given. And now you know why Paul said uh, 430 years. Because the last reaffirmation to Jacob was just before he went to Egypt. And 430 years later, after Jacob's affirmation, the law came. Listen to this now. Let's take a look at Genesis 46, 2 and 4. This is real interesting. It's a real interesting part of this lesson were the dates. Uh, 2,000 years prior to the birth of Christ. Genesis 46, 2, 4 says, listen to this. Beautiful. Beautiful. Verse 2. God spoke to Israel in visions of the night and said Jacob Jacob and he said here I am he said I am God the God of your father do not be afraid to go down to Egypt for I will make you a great nation there hallelujah 
I will go down with you to Egypt, and I will also surely bring you up again, and Joseph will close your eyes. Now that is a beautiful verse. God spoke to Jacob, go. And he speaks to us in this world today, go. Go save people. Go tell the world that this is a promise. Go tell everybody that you don't have to be good to find Jesus Christ. Go tell everybody you find him in your sick bed. You find him when you're hurting. You're going into slavery in Egypt, but you find Jesus. Take him with you. I'm going with you there. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I love you. I'm with you. I am God, the God of your father, the God who owns this world. And there's nothing more beautiful than to hear those words. Jacob, church, I am God. And I made a promise to you, and I'm going to keep it. And that promise comes through your faith, not your righteous deeds. Never get that mixed up. Never. And may the world grow to understand this. 